An arc of charge has a radius r and an angle 2 phi. The top half of the arc has a linear charge density positive lambda, while the bottom half has a linear density of negative lambda. Find the electric field at the center of the arc. You may wish to figure out the direction of the electric field first, so you know which component of the DE to integrate. By symmetry, the top half of the arc produces an electric field out of the positive charge from the midpoint of the top section. The bottom half produces an electric field into the negative charge and into the midpoint of the bottom section. And these two fields, in terms of magnitude, they are the same, because uh, these are same amount of charge equal distance away from this point. So when we add those two vectors together, we make a parallelogram, which happens to be a diamond shape, and then the diagonal is the sum. So the net electric field is downward. This means we just need to find the electric field's y component. So we want to find the electric field's y component, so we have to integrate and find the dE's y component. Let's say this is my point charge dQ. The field produced by that positive dQ comes out of the charge. That's the dE produced by the point charge dQ. If the angle to the midpoint is theta, that means this angle is theta. So if we want the dE's y component, we should multiply the dE by, by sine theta. So this will be the dE times sine theta. And of course, dE is k point charge dQ over r squared, and the distance between the point charge and this point we're interested in is the radius big R times sine theta. And then anything that's a constant can be taken out of the integral. So what can we take out? We can take out the k and the r squared, because for every dQ, the r is the same, but the not theta, because a different dQ would have a different theta. So what's left in the integral is uh, sine theta dQ. Now, this theta is a variable, so the sine theta is a function of theta. That means that we would like this to be d theta. So we are trying to write the dQ into something d theta. I redrew the dQ over here, and this is a fan shape. dQ is on the arc. dQ is the charge on this arc. d theta is the angle of the arc. So if we want the charge, that means that we want the angular charge density times the angle. However, in this problem, what's given is not the total charge, but the, the linear charge density. So we can also say that the charge is the linear charge density times the length. And that will be the lambda times the length of this arc. How do we find the length of the arc? It will be radius times the angle. So this will be r times d theta. That means uh, what goes here is uh, lambda times r. So I can rewrite this into that, replace dQ with uh, lambda times r d theta. Now lambda times r can be taken out again, so that means uh, it's k r squared times uh, lambda times r, so of course one of the r's cancel. And then we integrate sine theta, which gives us a cosine, actually negative cosine theta. What next? We have to integrate for all the dQs on the arc. So we have to write the upper and the lower limits. Since my angle theta is measured from the midpoint, I'm going to start with this dQ. If I go from here, that will be 0, 2, for that little bit of dQ, the angle theta would be 
phi, half of the two phi. So we will integrate from zero to phi for this part, and then for this half will be also zero and then to phi. Now in this particular case, if we write negative phi to phi, we're going to get zero. This part is going to be cosine phi minus cosine negative phi. A cosine function looks like this, which means the cosine phi and the cosine negative phi would be exactly the same. So these two are the same, which means we'll end up having zero. Because we already know the electric field over here is in the y direction. So there's no reason why the electric field's y component should be zero. So we should know that this is not right. We need to fix the mistake. It turns out that in this case, we cannot go from negative phi to phi. We must go from zero to phi and then double. We have to go from 0 to 5, so we can find the field contribution by this part of the charge. And then we know the negative side gives us the same contribution, so that's why we double it. The reason why integrating from negative 5 to 5 would give us 0 is because in this integration, we did everything exactly the same as if the entire arc of charge is positive. In that case, we do expect the y component of the electric field to be zero because the y contribution from these two halves of the arc would cancel. So for this problem, we have to go from zero to phi and then double. So we would have negative k lambda over r times cosine phi minus cosine zero and then times two. And the cosine zero is one. So this will be negative two k lambda over r and then times uh, cosine phi minus one or, or you can get rid of the negative and flip these two. So it'll be two k lambda over r times one minus cosine phi.